Hey everybody, Luxinda Swirl here. Okay, we are gonna do some mold work today, uh, resin work in molds. I'm also going to take this opportunity to finish up these three pieces that I made a while ago. I will link to the video below where I made these if you haven't seen that yet and, and you wanna see how I got here. They're basically done, but the finishing touch will be a layer of clear just inside the bottom of each tray which is what these are. These are little trinket trays. And uh, I made them with stickles, glitter glue, and tattoos. And now that needs to be covered, so I'm just gonna pour a layer of completely clear resin into the bottom of the tray in each case. So that will be pretty quick and simple, but you know, I figured I'm gonna do it. I might as well show you. And then those pieces will be completely done. And over here, I'm gonna make this mold, which I've, I've seen one person do this successfully, so I'm, I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, Steve McDonald of Steve McDonald Arts and Crafts did this mold and he did a great job and it looks fantastic. So I'm, I'm encouraged, I wanna try it myself. For, for all of these pieces, I am going to be using my ClearCast 7050 resin. Here we go, the ClearCast 7050. It's a relatively thin viscosity resin, which means it has very, I won't say doesn't have any bubble problems, but the bubbles release pretty quickly, pretty easily. So it is really good for casting molds and not having too many bubble issues. So I'm gonna mix this up. It's a two part A to one part B. I'm gonna mix up six ounces total. So four ounces of part A and two ounces of part B. We'll get six ounces total. And I am going to let it, after I mix it up, let it sit for about 15 minutes to release as many bubbles as possible. And then I'll hit it with a heat gun. And then I will be uh, filling part of this mold using a pipette. I have two here in case one fails because they do occasionally split on the seam and then they're, they're useless. So I have a backup and whatever I don't use here, I will then pour into here. And if I have more than I need for that, after all this is done, then I have a couple overflow molds going over here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna gear up, turn on the ventilation system. So just sit back and enjoy the show. I will turn this inside out first. That makes more sense. I was gonna brush this with, um, some sort of mica along the inside, but I think I'm gonna leave it completely as is. We'll just see how it goes this way. Next time I can start brushing micas in and stuff like that. So here we go.
and we're back. Let's see how things turned out. I am really curious to see what we ended up with here. Okay, I'm gonna move everything. These aren't full yet, my overflows. So we're gonna put those aside. There we go. I want to apologize. Uh, after editing the first portion that you just watched, I realized that the two trays were kind of off to the right hand side of my frame and try as I might with the editing I couldn't really center everything and I apologize for that. I think you could see everything but I know there was a lot of empty space over here and just didn't look great. I didn't realize it was that bad. All right so these three now have a completely clear flat smooth protective surface over the tattoos and the stickles where I drew in some accents, I don't know if you can see them. Because the background is so sparkly too, but you, I think you can see the, uh, the stickles there. It was just a very light accent I drew in, in some places on top of the tattoo. So now everything's, so now everything is filled in. I think you can see it from there. If I use the, the glare of the light to show you it's all flat and smooth, no bubbles, because I spritzed with alcohol at the end and that really, really helps. Don't be afraid to spritz with alcohol. I wouldn't advise doing it on cups. Some people do and they have no problems at all. Every time I've tried to spritz alcohol on cups, I've gotten fish eyes in the, uh, the resin and it's just, it's caused, I don't do it anymore. I use heat, preferably a torch on my cups, but on molds, I spritz with alcohol. So there you go. So these are done. Put those off to the side and we will attempt to demold these. Okay, now I, you really, you really saw a lot of fighting. Every single one of these bumps had a big fat air bubble in it and even after I got the big fat air bubble out, some of the little air bubbles stayed behind. That's why I spent so much time. In fact, I think I edited some of it out. It was just taking forever. Um, even speed it up like it was. It was taking forever. Oops, here we go. One thing at a time. There we go. So, it worked, though I don't see any air bubbles in the results that I'm unmolding here. Looks fantastic. So remember, use a metal stir stick to Empty the air out of your little bubble, or empty the bubbles out of your your little bumpy edges. I tried pinching at first, but that I put too much resin in. My bad. I meant to just put a little bit and then pinch all the air bubbles out. But I had already poured in too much resin. Not too much for the mold, but too much. Every time I tried to pinch, it overflowed. So that's why I switched to the metal stir stick. Okay, now for the big piece. We'll see how this turned out. This took a long time as well. And the reason this doesn't come cut, I wanted to show you this yesterday, uh, the mold, and I forgot. Um, it does, it, it comes solid, but it has these slits where you can cut yourself. So when you get it, it looks, it looks like that. And then using an X-Acto knife, you cut a slice in the spot you'll see to open those four slots up, and that's how you pipette in all the resin, like I did. And it, it, <laughs> you think this took a long time. Boy, this took forever, and what a mess, too. But I can't imagine any other better way of getting it in there. Maybe with a syringe, but you would still have to refill the syringe a bunch of times as well. So, I'm just saying. It's a tedious process, but ooh, well that looks pretty. All right, now the now the moment of truth. And boop, there it is. Look at that, it's got a lot of dust from the resin that's crumbling on top. I'll have to wash it all up, but that is pretty cool. 
Look at that. Again, it's very dusty right now from, from the resin that was on the edge here. So imagine that clean. <laughs> All right, so here's how it works. You put something in here. Okay, we'll use my little unicorn. This was an overflow mold. I demolded a couple videos ago. Isn't he cute? Isn't he adorable? Okay, so he's gonna be on display. And then we put the dome over, and there you go. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful display. Now, as I already mentioned, um, sanding this flat would obviously be the thing to do. In this case, it doesn't keep it from covering up what's inside. It just doesn't look as pretty as it could. Voila! There's my little unicorn dude in his little dome. <laughs> that is a very, very cool mold. It requires some tedious processing to make sure you get no bubbles. But you can see it happens. I mean, it works. It absolutely works. If you want to see another video of this particular mold being made or being cast with resin, I will link to Steve McDonald's below where I first saw this mold. Ta-da! Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.